My name is James Gabaza. I come from Zimbabwe, district of Chipinge in Manikaland. That's the eastern part of Zimbabwe, very close to Mozambique. So my colleagues here from Mozambique, we sort of uh, come from the same home. My presentation this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, uh, is uh, from my own experiences in the district of Chipinge and do not necessarily apply to other parts of uh, Zimbabwe. But uh, <coughs> for a start, this will give you a general idea of uh, what we are doing in terms of conservation agriculture in Zimbabwe, in particular Chipinge district. I first learned about uh, conservation farming, as we call it there, from an old friend. I don't know if he is around or, for, or if he is still there or, or if he remembers me. Brian Oldgrieve. I don't know if some of you commercial farmers remember this gentleman. He gave me a book. This book, this book here is <coughs> entitled The Conservation Farming for Communal, Small Scale, Resettlement, and Cooperative Farmers of Zimbabwe. That was in 1998. I am not a farmer by profession, and at that time I was in the public administration field. Uh, but I took an interest because he was a part of a team that was teaching conservation farming in Makoni district of uh, Manikale. We worked with the, the Department of Agritech, which is the Agricultural and Technical Extension Services, Minister of Agriculture in Zimbabwe, to convince newly resettled farmers that there was need to conserve our natural resources. There are three main resources that I'm going to talk about. The first one is air. The second one is soil. The third one is water. Now it's very difficult to conserve air. Of course, we are polluting it at a very, very enormous rate. But we can do something about the soil, isn't it? And water. We can conserve those. So we concentrate on those two. What is conservation farming? I try to look for a, a definition that works in, uh, in the internet. But I came up with this one from FAO that says a process that can serve the soil's organic levels for a longer period or a system or a practice that aims to conserve soil and water by surface cover to minimize runoff. So this is what we were teaching the farmers about. There were a lot of resistance here and there. The human beings don't want to be taught new things. I don't know if this happens in your countries as well. But where I come from, if you start talking about anything new, people will say you are mad. <laughs> but uh, with the conservation agriculture, to people who were used to plowing large tracts of land, using tractors and so on, and then you tell them that, ah, no, uh, plowing isn't so good after all. I think you know what I mean when I, mean, when I say we made resistance. But what we have done in our district, in the district of Chipinge, we have, uh, in fact, it was God given that uh, that district is mountainous and it has got sloppy land. So there's really no need to conserve soil runoff because uh, there's a lot of uh, there are a lot of plantations, and we grow crops that do not need to be uh, removed all the time. We grow tea. Once you grow tea, it stays there 
for 100 years. You don't have to dig around with it. We grow timber trees, pines, wattle, gum trees, and so on. But for the small-scale farmers who don't grow these crops, it is really a big problem. But we have uh, introduced, first of all, because of the time, the other chairman is saying, hey, your time is getting up. We have introduced the zero tillage as a first step uh, in commercial farming. We have also asked our farmers to sort of uh, take on perennial crops other than annual crops. I'm talking about uh, tea, coffee, macadamia nuts, sugar cane, chilies, cassava, and so on. They are taking that up as cash crops instead of maize and uh, raboko and soga. Then we also have a uh, vetiva grass. I don't know how many of us know about vetiva grass. It is a grass that was introduced to us in Chipinge by the Round Table Association. And we use it to make our uh, contours. That is a very good uh, uh, cover grass as well as something that can even make a hedge. Then we go on to weed control by herbicides. This is what we have introduced, but uh, there's a problem here when I talk about challenges. Some people have not read the instructions very carefully on the herbicides, and uh, the results were a disaster. But again, it all goes through training. Then we have also gone into agroforestry, which I've already talked about. Then we also have uh, fruit orchards. Instead of uh, planting maize and maize and maize, we have uh, asked our farmers to grow fruit trees so that you just pick the orange and leave the tree standing. Then we also have introduced the uh, water harvesting, where we dig pits in the field so that your water, when it rains, like this year we have had the abundant rains in our area, so we have dug holes so that it is stored there, we can use that in winter. The challenges that I can say here are, first of all, resistance to change, as I have already mentioned, uh, but uh, we have uh, sort of changed the people to take on uh, perennial crops. Then also some people say that uh, 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 see, CF is a bit expensive because you need to pay a lot of uh, money for people to dig pits uh, in the ground. I've made some calculations here. Uh, by plowing using a tractor in Chipinge, it costs 225, uh, no, it costs $80 a hectare for everything. That is the clearing and the, and, the, and the plowing. But if you take people to do that, that's digging the holes, it will cost $225. The labor cost is quite high. But when you also look at uh, the other problems that we have uh, faced, uh, simply the question of uh, uh, there are people not wanting to to, to pay money to the labor. But I think the overall, we are saying the advantages of uh, uh, co conservation farming outweigh the disadvantages. So what are we doing? What are we going to do when we get back? I've come here personally to learn. They say adult ed education is, uh, you are allowed to copy. When we were at primary school, if you copied the like yes, uh, you were smacked by your teacher, isn't it? But here, we are allowed to copy from each other, isn't it? So we are going to do a lot of copying from each other and so that we learn and we again go back to teach our, our friends. What we would like to ask is if we could get more of books like this one to educate our people on conservation farming. I don't know where to get them, but uh, if we do, those who can give us some books or uh, to sell us this little booklet, booklet like this one here, it will be a pleasure. We can teach our people. 
And also the other thing is that uh, we are asking if government can, our government all over, can organize that the ministries of agriculture organize lots and lots of, 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 of education. It's a question of training people. If you train them, then they will respond. If you don't train them, we'll end up with no essay at all. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much indeed, uh, James, for that very elaborate presentation. And uh, one of the things that I really need to pick out from what James has said is that there is need, the farmers need published or written or printed, whatever you want to call it, literature. 